war has been, you know, the war has been declared uh, three days before. So it is very, it's not very pacific, as you said. And, but you know, be as it may, this uh, has stayed. Uh, we have now the European Union hymn, which is from Beethoven, which is the, uh, the uh, hymn to brotherhood of the Ninth Symphony. So uh, if you really don't like the lyrics of the Marseillaise, you can ask them to shut up. And uh, you, can <laughs> sing, you can sing the, uh, you can sing the hymn, uh, the, the hymn of uh, uh, Beethoven's uh, hymn, L'Ode à la Joie. One, 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 speaking of which, uh, one, one exceptional piece in the, in the movie is of course in the movie Casablanca. If you remember, the, uh, the German in the cafe, uh, the cafe uh, starts to sing a German song, a little bit Nazi, saying the Rhine is German, and, da, 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 and the captain walks in, stops it, and says, uh, and, they, and they start the, the Marseillaise. And it brings tears to my eyes. Francis. Yes. Just, just everyone be patient, please. Great. <laughs> <laughs> this unfortunate demonstration, but more of his presence in Casablanca bring on. I advise that this place be shut up at once. But everybody's having such a good time. Yes, much too good a time. The place is to be closed. But I've no excuse to close it. Find one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After this disturbance, it's not safe for us. Very well done. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, first, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. And I just, uh, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Yes. Pat, very okay. well. I just wanted to follow up on the question of uh, Francoise before about, uh, you know, there was this idea of changing the, the words of, of the Marseillaise, and that, that is true, of course, of the U.S. national anthem, too. There have often been criticisms to change it and make it less militaristic and so on. But so I'm wondering, what was the suggestion only to change the words, but not the melody, because the melody is so identified at this point um, um, with, with, with France. And, uh, and uh, I remember my class had, my French class, we all had to learn to sing it when I was 12 years old, and we were all very proud. So I, I personally feel very attached to it. But I'm, I'm wondering if the, if the suggestion was only to change certain of the lyrics and, and not the, the melody. 
again, uh, again, I don't think that, uh, you know, the French need controversy. The French need, <laughs> the, the French need things uh, to, uh, uh, to, to attack, to struggle, to strike, and so forth. So uh, that has not been, this is no longer on the table. And I think we have, we have, uh, we have more things to think about and to fight about. So um, the, uh, the lyrics of the Marseillaise are, as I said, uh, they are what they are. And uh, the same thing with, uh, with the statue in, in America of certain people whom, you know, uh, want to be, uh, to be taken out because, you know, uh, in their past, the, some of the people uh, uh, were not too reliable. So, uh, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Merci. Well, please, Marceline has raised her hand. She has a question. Marceline. Oh, Marceline. yes. Uh, bonjour, bonjour. Merci. Uh, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. It was just absolutely just wonderful. And I, just following up on the controversial um, aspect of the Marseillaise, there was also the very controversial um, Serge Gainsbourg. Didn't he sing a very controversial version of the Marseillaise? Sort of... Um, with a like a reggae kind of like he like he actually did sort of change the melody i believe and it was also highly controversial i don't remember serge gainsbourg i remember a an algerian group who uh, used the uh, the marseillaise on uh, on the high on the uh, with the with, with the arabic algerian rhythm uh, again, you know, let's let's face it. It's one of our symbol of our republic, of our country, and I don't think we uh, uh, we should even uh, you know discuss its changes. Right. Uh, I, yeah, I think it was in the '70s, oh, uh, and he sort of used a reggae inflection, and it just it was also just another sort of controversy in the kind of. But yes, but thank you, thank you so much, thank you, merci. I have a question. Yes. I, I have a question. My question is, uh, is Strasbourg the seat of the European Parliament? Yes. And if so, do they play the Marseillaise and also the Hymn of Europe? No, at, at the European Parliament, they don't play the Marseillaise. The European Parliament is for Europe. So it's like Brussels. It's the co-capital -capi of uh, the European Union. So when they need, they, they play the Ode à la Joie. Beethoven's, which is the European Union, they will not play La Marseillaise. Okay, my other question. The original group from Alsace that were Presbyterian, Catholic, and Jewish, what is the makeup of the area today? Do they still have some of these relatives of the original uh, people living there? What is the mix today of Alsace? Oh. Are you talking about... Uh, no, I want to answer your question. Are you talking about the Union Alsacienne? Yes. Are you talking about the demographic composition of Alsace? Yes, yes, that's my question. Because it's very interesting. It's very interreligious historically. It's quite unusual, Catholic, Christian, and Jewish, the melange. Interestingly enough, you have a country in the Middle East called Bahrain, and to this day, Jewish people are living there peacefully. It's the same mix, a little country called Bahrain and a small area called Alsace. That's interesting. No, in Alsace, we, as I said, we still have a very important uh, element. When Alsace became French, again, at uh, the uh, Treaty of uh, Westphalia in 1648, it was mainly Protestant, and Louis XIV sent all his troops and uh, the Rohan family uh, to, uh, to put some Catholicism there. So uh, now, uh, religiously, uh, we still have a very important Protestant uh, population, and uh, and a very, and as I said, a very important Jewish uh, community. All the Jewish, uh, the Grand Rabbi of France, uh, until 1970, were of all were all of Alsatian origin. In 1970, changed, uh, they became Sephardim from. Um, 
uh, from North Africa, from Algeria. But this may be uh, uh, the, the topic of another presentation for an apéro virtuel. Well, it's to be lauded because uh, it shows the intellectual opening and thoughts of, of France already being an interreligious mix. It's quite amazing. And I remember, I mean, I remember growing up as a child uh, when we were going on vacances you know, on vacation during the summer in small villages in the Vosges. We had the church which had the Protestant, it became a temple at nine o'clock and uh, the, the Catholic service at 10 in the same place. <laughs> Thank you so much. And it's very rewarding to know this history as somebody who loves France, I'm always looking for a nice thought about France. It's lovely. Thank you. Uh, I think Judith has a question. Judith, I'm going to unmute you. Judith, did you have a question? You need to unmute. You. Uh, there you go. Oh, I thought I had. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Phil Cease, you've been a diplomat all over the world. I'm wondering if children in Francophone African countries, for example, learn the Marseillaise, or in Vietnam or other Fran Francophone countries. Right. It's, it's a difficult question. I am not sure. I am not sure. What I can remember, I can tell you a personal history. My very first post in my life, many years ago, my very first post, I was in Côte d'Ivoire. And my parents, my late parents, visited me. And then my assistant in the office uh, spoke to my parents and said, uh, you know, welcomed them and said, uh, yeah, we got a French education and uh, we got a, we learned songs in, uh, in French. Oh, and, Megan, uh, right? this, and the song I remember, okay. and she started to sing, Maréchal, oh, voilà, tu nous as. It was the Vichy France uh, national anthem. Mm -hmm. My parents were absolutely flabbergasted. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, and so she didn't sing La Marseillaise. She sang Maréchal, but voila. So uh, can I, can I I'm not sure, question? you know, the kids in Africa are very clever. So can I, can some, I some I'm question? sure, knew La Marseillaise, but... Um, can I offer some insight here? Can I, and you have a question? No, I have a, can, I can offer some insight here. I don't have a question, I have an answer actually. Since I did grow up in Cameroon, in Tunisia, Yes, in French school, we did learn the Marseillaise. Oh, you were shocked. <laughs> so in, you, was, I was in French school, both in, in Douala and in Tunis. And yes, we learned the Marseillaise. Wonderful. I, I got dumped in Douala when, when I couldn't get out of Malabo in 1980-something when they were trying to kill me with a old president who was succeeded by the current dictator. And you're from Douala. You're the only other person I've ever known from Douala. <laughs> and Douala, and, and Douala, you mean Douala or Kampala? Which one? No, Douala, Cameroon. Yeah, so I was in Douala uh, under um, Ahicho, Amadou Ahicho. Mm -hmm. Now we have Mr. Paul Bia, but the Paris American Club, we don't do politics. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. <laughs> we love Cameroon. It's fabulous. Are there any other uh, last questions for uh, Francis? May I ask another one? Sure, Mary. Thank you very much. Francis, forgive me that I did not thank you for your wonderful program when I asked my first question. So let me thank you now. And let me also ask you said that there were periods during which the Marseillaise was not the anthem of France. And I think you said Napoleon. We cannot hear you, I'm sorry. Could so, you? Uh, oh. uh, Fonsi, uh, oh. uh, 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 the question was there were periods of time when it was not the national anthem of France, such as during Napoleon time. Uh, were, what were the periods when it was not considered the official national anthem? Is that your correct? Is, did I get your question right, Mary? 
We did. Thank you, John. You're Thank welcome. You. Okay, Mary. So, as I said, under the Napoleon regime until 1815 and under the Restauration until 1830, the Marseillaise was not the national anthem. It became again the national anthem in um, um, 1830. And uh, it was officially declared national anthem in 1879 uh, with, the, with the birth of the Third Republic. It was, of course, forbidden uh, in, um, in uh, World War II when uh, France was occupied, when Paris was occupied by, by the Germans. And what was the anthem, or what, was there an anthem for Napoleon? And, and why didn't he want the Marseillaise, or do you know? Maybe, maybe this is one of those mysteries we should do some research on. It's not a mystery. I mean, Napoleon wants, you know, one, Napoleon was created a new, uh, a new France, a new uh, administration, a new uh, law, a new, uh, uh, new nobility, a new aristocracy, and so uh, he would not accept uh, this, uh, this uh, national, uh, this national uh, song, and he wanted to make it its own. The yeah, the same uh, in World War Two actually. You, um, there is another, you know, Le Chant des Partisans. Le Chant, uh, Le Chant des Partisans in World War II was actually a Russian hymn, which, and I want to greet uh, Tatiana Androsov, who I hope will not contradict me. Le Chant des Partisans was translated by Joseph Kessel, Maurice Druyon from the uh, French Academy in London, and, and was sang for the first time by Anne Marley. And, uh, there were some suggestions when De Gaulle was in London to, to have Le Chant des Partisans as our national anthem once France would be liberated. But of course, General De Gaulle, when he came back in 44, says, no, we'll keep, we'll keep La Marseillaise. And Le Chant des Partisans uh, was the, the symbol of the French underground and of the true France. But that should be, that can be, uh, the topic of another uh, apéro virtuel, le chant, le chant des partisans. <laughs> Good. Merci. That would be great. That's a uh, favorite version of the Macias. I beg your pardon? You have a favorite version, of, a favorite singer of the I, I like particularly the one, and I thank John for showing it, in uh, Casablanca, which I think is quite extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, that was terrific. That was wonderful, yeah. And, uh, it reminds me of a personal history. I, again, many years ago, we were on vacation in the Schwarzwald in the Black Forest with my family. And uh, in this auberge, in this uh, hotel where we stayed, uh, some German were, were drinking and uh, started to sing one of those songs you know, the Rhine is German and so forth. And I, I will never forget my father coming down and, uh, and starting, uh, asking them to shut up. And, <laughs> and they did. So I will never forget that either. Um, Francis, I have another question. Since you mentioned the separation Église Etat in Alsace, and I'm wondering on a daily basis, how the fact that you were never affected by that law since the early 1900s, how is it affecting the daily life of the Alsacian? You know, where do you find a change and a different type of living due to that uh, difference? It's a big difference because, uh, you know, in 1905, Alsace was not French, was still uh, was occupied by uh, Germany. So uh, as of today, as we speak in 2020, the priests, the Protestant, the, the rabbis, the bishop of Strasbourg, Metz, uh, are civil servants and very well paid, excuse me, very well paid by the French, by, by French taxpayers. So uh, it's a big difference, you know, in, uh, in the rest of France, uh, the poor priest in the village in Cantal, in Auvergne, in Bretagne has no money, while in Alsace and uh, in the Moselle, in uh, the northern part of Lorraine, um, the, the, I, I repeat, the priests, the pastors and the rabbis are French civil servants, very well paid. 
so oh. it makes a big difference. Of course, but besides the tax system, does it has any other uh, factors, you know, any other uh, implementation which make changes or it's mostly the facts and those, uh, th those taxes, you know, those payment of the priest and rabbis and... No, this should be, this is the subject of another, uh, another presentation <laughs> of the virtual apéro. Uh, it, has, it has some effects on the fact that uh, uh, Alsace and Moselle, we, we never use Alsace-Lorraine. You know, Alsace-Lorraine is a German concept. <laughs> the French have to use Alsace-Moselle because uh, Lorraine, just half of Lorraine was occupied by, by Germany. Anyhow, so, uh, you, you ask uh, what, what are the consequences? The uh, Alsace and Moselle uh, are, are more religious. I mean, it's the religious uh, affiliation is much more active there than in the rest of France. I have a very important question. Please, what? and I hope it's easy. It's very easy, and you're the exactly the correct person to answer it. Where do we get the best choucroute garni in the United States or New York? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very, very good question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Uh, we used to have a, a Brasserie d'Alsace, which unfortunately closed on 86. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Wait, Café d'Alsace? The Café d'Alsace closed, yeah. It closed? Um, yeah, it closed. A long time. Oh, when did it close? So, excuse me? When did it close? It closed a few months ago. Xavier, you know things better than me. Oh no! In February. It closed uh, like a month ago. Yeah. Oh, now oh I would recommend. I would recommend the best choucroute if you order in advance is at the Little Frog with oh, yeah. François yeah. Latapie. Oh yes, the Little Frog. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Little Frog, which Xavier, help me. Which street is it? Not, it's not, not the big, not the big grenouille. No, it's on 86th Street. And second, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but can you but, have delivery? But, but I mean, I will. You know, I have to share with you a secret. If uh, Bob, listen to me carefully, and this, uh, this has to stay without, uh, with, with, uh, with Entre us. Nous. Entre Entre nous. Nous. If you want a real choucroute with wonderful Alsatian wine. The best place is Chateau Village, and the uh, owner of Chateau Village is John Bennett, the president of the Paris American Club. <laughs> <laughs> he will do the I'll best, the best. reservation. And I, I see Veronica uh, to laugh. Uh, Vero, you agree with me? I completely agree with you, Francis. <laughs> completely agree. Well, I don't know about the shark food. <laughs> The best veal, Marcel, at John Bennett's. John is yes, a also. cook. Thank you, thank you. There. Thank you very much. They never had a bad meal. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so on this note, <laughs> on, this this note on, on this note, uh, we have to clap for our shortly, and. Next, next week to uh, our uh, uh, Mardi will be uh, a lesson in uh, making a Grand Marnier Soufflé. Um, uh, so uh, by Simon uh, Herfle. So uh, we're, we're ending on the uh, food note. So that's, that's, that's very, very good. Francis, again, merci énormément, merci beaucoup. C'était un grand plaisir comme toujours. Uh, tout le monde, merci de votre uh, attention. And uh, just one other little reminder, next, uh, this Thursday, Thursday's uh, non-judgmental French will be at six, not at five anymore. We're, we're moving it back to six as hopefully people are going back to work. And uh, so six seems to be a, a better hour. So look forward to seeing you either Thursday or next uh, um next uh, mardi, next uh, Tuesday. Again, Francis, merci énormément. Au revoir. Merci, Francis. Merci beaucoup, Francis. Merci. 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 Merci.
Uh, we're going to get the recipe in advance and we'll send it out. We'll, we'll, oh, we're going to be sending it out. So you can make it as uh, along with... Uh, yes, we all want to cook it with you. And we need, we need love. We need love. Yes. We all do. we need is love. Good chance. L'amour. L'amour. Toujours l'amour. Francis, can you send how to join the non-judgmental French? Is uh, that another um, John sends it to you. Oh, John okay. will send it to you. Yeah. Six so on Thursday. If you're not on our uh, email list, we, you should be getting an email every week. Please, uh, info at Paris American Club. Get, send me your in contact and we'll add you to the list. Info okay. at ParisAmericanClub.org. The, mm -hmm. the website is the yeah. same thing, at ParisAmericanClub.org. All the information is there. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll send it here just so that people have it. But. Mm -hmm. Merci beaucoup, Francis. Merci, à la prochaine. Merci encore. Francis, à la prochaine. À la prochaine, Francis. Tout le monde. Ciao. Plein de toi. Ciao. Merci. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. À la prochaine. Where are you going? Sorry? I'm taking out the bar. No, I couldn't.